Hi guys, Mitch in the JTA Workshop. We've been doing a bit of sharpening today and we get plenty of emails asking us lots of different questions about sharpening. However, we also get lots of emails asking us lots of the same questions about sharpening. So today we're doing a quick Q&A, quick answers to the most common questions. Daniel's behind the camera and he's got the paper. Go Daniel. Should I stoke? <laughs> you should definitely stoke your water stones. Should I stoke my stones and should I leave them in the water? Should you stoke your stones, should you leave them in the water? It, that depends largely on what stones you own. If you own a Serac Sewer Hero stone, uh, yes, you should definitely soak your stones. I give them 15 minutes the first time out of the packet, at least 10 minutes most of the time to use them after that. You cannot have a stone too wet. The water in a water stone is what gives you your slurry, what gives you your feel, what, it's what gives you all of this going on. A dry water stone is no good. You can see here, this stone has not been in the water. And if we chuck some water on the surface of that, it disappears instantly. And this is like sharpening on a beach. It's just not going to work. So uh, soak your stones before use. Shapton stones are seen as a spray and go. They work very well as a spray and go. When you look in the packet instructions of any of the fine grit Shaptons, 5,000, 8,000, 12,000, it says that they should be soaked before use anyway. So if in doubt, soak. If you spray them and they dry out, soak them. But if you spray them and they keep their water, away you go. Oh, should you leave them in the water? That's a very good question. I often accidentally leave these in the water over a weekend or something because I'm absent-minded and in a rush. Uh, it hasn't affected any of these stones so far, but I would not deliberately choose to always leave them in the water. These are all, uh, Shaptons and Serax are, are a, a ceramic stone, so they've been fired at a molecular level. They're very stable. They're not gonna go soft. Uh, however, I generally like to pull them out of the water after a session, let them dry, and then put them away once they're a bit dry. Um, people do keep them in containers of water. Not my preference, but I haven't actually seen one go soft myself. I've heard stories, but I haven't seen any go mushy yet. Generally not. How do I keep my stones flat? How do you keep your stones flat? There are a number of very good ways of keeping your stones flat. However, I think the best one is diamond plates, when your diamond plate is flat. At JTA, we have gone through a number of diamond plate manufacturers because we have received shipments at different points in time of diamond plates that were not flat enough for flattening water stones. The Atoma brand that we currently stock, we're very happy with. We've had great results with them. Uh, they're nice and consistent. So that's what I like to recommend. I recommend a 400 grit Atoma for pretty much any application that involves flattening. In terms of technique, back and forth, little circles, flip it round. If you want to go diagonally, a little bit diagonally, if you've got some really high spots, a little bit diagonally back the other way. Whatever you can do to keep referencing as much of the stone as possible and knocking down the high spots. And away you go. This, at the moment, currently, as of 2020, is $125. For $25, you can do glass on sandpaper. That works as well. Uh, there's a few more compromises because you can't get it as wet and that sort of stuff. But it is much, much cheaper. And if you're just dipping your toe in sharpening, it's a good way to go. Whatever you do, use something that is as large or a similar size as your water stone to reference everything you can. What's the Nagura for? What is the Nagura for? The Nagura, in my opinion, the Nagura is from the heyday of Japanese sharpening when most people were using natural stones. Natural stones can be very hard and can be very uh, difficult to get them to give up a slurry. So working up a slurry with a Nagura on a natural stone, it's a really good way to sort of get it activated and get it going. Depending on the stone, lots of different uh, things there. But on synthetic, synthetic stones, the Shapton, oh, sorry, the Sewer Heroes, for example, actually ship with a tiny white stone sitting in the base there. This is good if you are sharpening something that has getting lots of metal files, filings stuck in the stone. You can work them out and work them out with that over the surface. However, I don't find this is very effective as a slurry, uh, slurry creator because this is a very porous stone, so that needs to be quite wet. However, a diamond plate will create that slurry, no problems at all. In terms of flattening a, flattening a water stone, a Nagura stone is no good because it is too small. You can't reference enough area of this stone to make everything flat. So in general, I do not use Nagura stones on synthetic stones. I would just use a diamond plate to create a slurry, flatten off and clean it up. How can I avoid chipping the edge or cutting into my stone? Damage to water stones can be heartbreaking, but very rarely is it going to break your stone beyond use or you know beyond a state of repair. So. This, has, this little 1,000 grit stone has lost a few corners here, and that's quite common to see. What's generally happened there is that I've sharpened far too close up to the corner, put too much pressure, and it sort of crumbled the corner and crumbled the edge. Uh, 
I'd obviously try and avoid doing that. Recommend coming in about five mil with your, and not putting too much pressure when you're working on the extremities. And to reinforce those corners, I would bevel off a stone once it's been put away or if we're starting to see any of these behaviors, behaviors creep in. So beveling off, and if you've got a little chip out of the edge, rounding out that chip can be quite a simple process with a diamond plate, and that will keep it a bit more protected. Cutting into the top of a stone. This is a problem generally I've found for me, I've done this once, and I did it sharpening a kitchen knife, and I did it sharpening a kitchen knife on uh, an 8,000 grit stone. So that is something like this one here, and here in this stone we've got a little chip out of the surface. So that is problematic because this means that we now have an area of our stone which we can't really use. Where's a kitchen knife? Do I have a kitchen knife? This little chip means that we can't use that middle area of the stone but we can go above it and we can go below it. I think that this happened to me because I was sharpening, my knife was nice and sharp, I'd got it up you know, through a 3000 grit onto the 8000 and I was at probably a bit of a too high an angle, putting too much pressure and I just cut out the top of the stone. Uh, the knife was okay, the knife was fine, much better than the stone, uh, and over the course of flattening the stone and continuing to use it, I went through that hollow and uh, it's now a flat stone that you can use again. Um, so I think if that problem has presented itself to you, adjust your angle, go gentle, not too much downward pressure, uh, and really pay as much attention as you can to what's going on, because I think I was being a bit absent-minded. Should I push or pull when sharpening? Should you push or pull when sharpening? Whichever you feel is working for you the best. Uh, so here I've got a hard 8,000 grit Shapton stone. And the reason I'm grabbing that is I think that on some of the harder stones, people find that they get um, chatter or shudder as they work up and down the stone. So there's a few variables there. I think that on harder stones, it's and generally finer stones because of that, it's more prevalent. Um, I think that if you're getting shudder and chatter and lots of uh, jitter across the surface, add water. A wetter stone, I think, I find is easier to manage. Um, as for push or pull, I mean, well, I think whatever feels good, I do both. Uh, and I don't really want to say categorically whether one is better than the other. One thing that people do ask me about is figure eights as well, uh, because they're pushing and pulling in that figure eight. So, now we'll go here. You know, uh, in, in Australia, it seems that in trade schools and on work sites and all that sort of thing, for a very long time, the accepted wisdom for sharpening has been to do a figure eight on the stone, working around the top, swinging around diagonally, swinging around back diagonally the other way. And I've never had good results with this. I mean, I'm much less practiced at it than some other people. And, you know, I've been asked about this by people who've been sharpening longer than I've been living. If you get good results on a figure eight, stick with it. If it's working, don't fix it. Uh, but if you're learning to sharpen and you've seen this done, uh, I think it's a fairly tricky thing to master and I find it much easier to go short forward and back strokes to keep my geometry the same. What's the best stone combo? The best stone combo is a very good question. Generally, a thousand grit is a very, very safe grit to start with and then one higher. Uh, you can start with a combination stone. We offer combination stones in many different grits. We have a 1,000, 3,000 combo and a 1,000, 6,000 combo. If you think that sharpening is something you're going to be interested in, I suggest the 1,000, 3,000, because from 3,000, you can jump up to a 6, an 8, a 10, 12,000 grit even, if you're feeling very adventurous. You get a good, val good value for money when you buy a fine stone. With a 1,000, 6,000, uh, jumping from a 6,000 up to an 8,000 isn't a big difference in terms of fineness. So you need to go finer to get uh, more bang for your buck, uh, which in turn sort of means often you're investing more in stones. So if you're looking, if you think that sharpening uh, is something you want to do on a single stone and a single combination, go 1,000, 6,000. But generally, uh, if you're going chisels, I'd sharpen on 1,000. And then if I have a three or a six or a five or even an eight, and Takami Kawai, when he taught here, went from 1,000 to 8,000, uh, you can definitely just do one higher than 1,000. Plain blades, putting in a couple of steps is a bit, uh, bit easier. And also, if you have chips in your blade, having something below that is handy. So this is a 320-800 combo, very easy to have, but I can generally go from a 320 grit to a 1,000. All right, I hope that's helpful. If there's something we haven't covered here, send us an email, drop us a comment, and we'll try and cover it in another video. Happy sharpening.